G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 16 of our Eric Den Haag rebuild of Manchester United here on Dylan on the Ball. Today we're taking on Borussia Dortmund in the first leg of our round of 16 playoff in the Champions League. That's our goal for this season. We're trying to win the Champions League. We won the league in the first year. We're trying to get that Champions League crown and Oates is having his dinner right beside me trying to make as much noise as possible as soon as I hit record. It's fantastic. The world is good. We're having a great time. Since you were last here, there has been a few games and a little bit of transfer business. And I mean, it's pretty significant transfer business because it is exactly what Manchester United fans have been crying out for, for, I mean, ever since this fella signed for the club, really. So without further ado, I've done it. I've, I've won over the United fan base, really. I have sold Harry Maguire. It's happened. We did not get anywhere near the 55 million were being it's being quoted as uh, here in his transfer value. But if we look at the history, I mean, he was 37 and a half million. We definitely made a loss on him, but in half a season, he had played six games for us. So look, I was pretty happy to get 37 and a half million for him. That does leave us a little bit light in defense. That leaves us with Bastoni, Fakeo Tomori, and Rafael Varane. So we're a little bit light. Who have we gone on and replaced him with? We've gone and signed Josko Gvardiol from RB Leipzig. The intention behind this one, I mean, he isn't perhaps at the standard of Varane, Tomori, and Bastoni as yet. He's very, I mean, if he's not at the standard, he's right below that, I guess, tier, that upper echelon of superstar centre-backs. He will get there, though. He's 21, and uh, I mean, I've discussed it before, where uh, at the end of this season, I'm going to skip ahead a few years to see, you know, what Eric Ten Hag has built. I suppose the house that Eric Ten Hag built is still standing, perhaps. Geez, that was creative, wasn't it? That's... Ah, there's a headline. So I guess Josko Gvardiol is one for that future, I suppose. At 21 years old, he is already fantastic. He will get first team appearances. You can see down the bottom, he's already made some appearances in the uh, in the games that have gone on since you were last here. He will be one that I believe should be at the club for another decade or so, along with Jude Bellingham, along with Raphael Leal and Bastoni. These are the, you know, the, the cornerstones of the future of this club for the next you know, for the foreseeable future, I suppose. And, uh, and you know, if we, if it so happens that we don't go on and win the Champions League this season, I think we're, we're possibly setting them up for, you know, sustained glory and sustained success, really, by signing these absolute young guns, again, like Bellingham, like Vardiol, like Karim, how did I not mention Karim Adeyemi as well? So that was the thought there. As for our form, since you were last here, which was this game here against Chelsea, we have gone on to smash Burnley in the Carabao Cup. We've smashed Blackburn, who are in the Premier League. A draw with Everton. We beat Manchester City right at the end of the transfer window. Wins then against Fulham, Leicester and Brighton. Leicester being in the FA Cup. Uh, and then unfortunately, our good run, if you look at all of this time, I mean, I suppose we did lose to Tottenham in the Premier League not too long ago. So I guess it was only a, you know, a month and a half. But I mean, that was pretty, uh, pretty intensely good football. Like 6-0, 2-0, 5-0, 3-1, 4-0, 5-1. Uh, has then come crashing down against the Arsenal. 2-1 loss at home as well, which you do not love to see. We do have the Carabao Cup final. I don't think we'll show that in a video because I think what we'll do is... We'll have this one today, and then we'll go through to the second leg against Brucey Dortmund. Who knows whether, I mean, hopefully we get through. If not, I, I suppose that next video after that will be, I mean, we might just skip all the way to the end of the season if we don't get through in the Champions League. I'm not sure. We'll see. See how we go. Because, I mean, I, I kind of just want to get to the point where we're doing that, skipping ahead into the future a little bit. Like, part of me wants to get through to that. Looking at the goal scorers since you were last here, it was the Carabao Cup, where we had goals from Adiemi, Pedronetto, Tom Lamar, and Amad Diallo. Absolutely ran riot against Burnley here. Much better XG. We were just the better side. It's, I mean, it's a simple story. It's an easy story, but one that we're pretty used to seeing, I suppose. We then hosted Blackburn, and it was Ronaldo, Jaden Sancho, a missed, a missed penalty? No, a disallowed goal, sorry, from Ronaldo. Goal for Bellingham, goal for Adiemi, goal for Ronaldo. I mean, 
to get to be 5 nil up after 67 minutes. We must have been absolute different gravy. Our XG is insane. We created some beautiful, beautiful chances. It looks like this one might have well have been a penalty, really, looking at the XG jump here. Um, I'm not sure what that square there means. Anyway, we then drew two all with Everton where we unfortunately just in the second half weren't really at the races. I mean, I guess we got that goal just after the half with Bellingham, but after that Bellingham goal where we retook the lead, we didn't really create an awful lot. And I think that's fairly disappointing going for the quality of side that we are and have been this season, especially when you look at the, the XG there where we've lost on the XG to Everton, but we've had more shots, which just isn't good enough for the, again, for the standards that we've set. Matthias Vigna also got a, a red card in that game, which I suppose doesn't exactly help us out. It was actually what gave away the penalty was his second yellow card, so pretty disappointing stuff there. I guess it's good to come away with a point and not to have lost that one, but we would have liked to have seen us put in a better shift there. We then hosted City in the Manchester Derby, we beat them 2-1. It was goals from Luke Shaw and Jaden Sancho. XG doesn't really tell the story. Their penalty definitely makes that seem a lot more even than it was. We did not have the possession. Pep Guardiola's side definitely held that ball much better than us. But I, I guess we were just more effective with our possession, creating a, a decent amount of chances. We didn't lose our heads, didn't get any cards. We were just solid. Gave away that one penalty that Kevin De Bruyne tucked away. Um, but we were happily winners of the Manchester derby. Fulham then came to Old Trafford next and it was another absolute demolition on the XG front and on the shots, I mean, and possession. We were just absolutely on top of them. It seems like a really Fulham have parked the bus, haven't they? And it's it's resulted in a 3-0 win, goals from Rashford, two for Bellingham, and Bellingham did also get the assist for Rashford's goal, so absolute stonking effort from Jude Bellingham. He has been absolutely unreal. If we look at his stats in 27 or I guess 27 starts one appearance off the bench 12 goals seven assists an average rating of 7.29 all up he has been absolutely sensational and for 19 years old he is only going to get better and better and really <laughs> if you're united you're probably wanting to tie him down to another contract so I suppose a player of this caliber producing this sort of results these sort of high standard of performances He's going to want more money than that, isn't he? Uh, I mean, 125000 a week, I, I wouldn't say no to, but I, I suppose he would possibly be being turned elsewhere when you, you think of the likes of PSG and Bayern Munich and, and, and even Real Madrid may come calling in the not-too-distant future, I suppose. After Fulham, it was into the FA Cup where we came away winners on penalties. End of the day... Aaron Juan Masaka scored his, Luke Thomas didn't finish his. It was kind of weird where, I mean, for, firstly, we took the lead in the 111th, threw it away with a red card thanks to Frank Kessie in the 119th minute. Then the penalty shootout, everyone scored, what's this, one, two, three, four, four each, five each, should be, sorry, five, five each, it was five all, and then both teams missed two in a row. Aaron Wan Basaka finished his, but Luke Thomas, unfortunately for Leicester, did not finish his. Really, on the, the face of things, we should have won in regular time. We really should have put the game to bed. We should have played better than we did. But I suppose what matters in the end in the cup is how you progress, and that is exactly what we did. We then had Brighton, and it was 5 0. Absolutely incredible performance. Goals, goals, goals. Just clinical finishing. Five different goal scorers, so a great team effort. It was Bellingham, Yemi, Rice, and Ronaldo. Oh, that's only four. Sancho also scored. I am terrible at speaking. Um, it was only 1-0 at halftime. Second half, we absolutely ran riot. You can see the, the XG goes up rather quickly. But, I mean, the, the goals do too. I mean, it was absolutely sensational, that second half there, where we absolutely ran away, ran away with things. Then, just the three days later, it was against the Arsenal that we have gone away and, and gone away no we stayed at home we lost 2-1 it was a 91st minute winner from Gabriel from a Bukayo Saka cross Arsenal had taken the lead through Reese Nelson we equalized with Raphael Leao who has also been absolutely sensational this season Gabriel got the winner for Arsenal again a match we really should have won we played so much better than them created so many more chances just couldn't find that finish and I suppose it was one of those ones where you just you just sort of know at the end of the day 
that it's just not going your way, and then they get one. I mean, it wasn't deserved, but Arsenal did walk away with all three points. That does take us through to today's fixture. We are versing Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League, first leg of the round of 16 tie. You may have spotted it in the previous screen that Erling Haaland is actually out for this first leg. He sprained his ankle. He is out. That puts us in a good position, hopefully, to hold them at bay and to, to put a couple of past them, really. Our Manchester United lineup for this big one today, heading away to Signal Laduna Park, will be De Gea in goals, backline of Wan Bissaka, Varane, Tamori, and Shaw, midfield three of Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, and Bruno Fernandes, right wing Jaden Sancho, left wing Leao and the big man Ronaldo up front. I will be changing his role from advanced forward to poacher. I think that role just suits him that much better in his, you know, aging legs, I suppose. Just suits him that little bit better. Hopefully he can make the difference today as we head over to Germany. As we look across the two lineups here, I will just remind you the guys then to please leave us a like down below, subscribe if you're new to the channel if you're enjoying the video, leave us a comment down below, sub subscribe, follow us on the socials, all of the things, all of the things. That's enough talking, let's get through to some football. See how we go against Dortmund. Is definitely a bit of a blessing not having to go up against Erling Haaland, especially in, I mean, I was going to say especially in Football Manager, but I suppose in real life too, because he's just an absolute weapon. And his goal scoring record shows that. Hopefully he keeps that up for Manchester City, in my opinion. Oh no, that's, I mean, that's a red card, isn't it? Oh, Declan Rice, you've absolutely shat the bed. What are you doing? Ten minutes in. You're kidding. All right, that definitely changes the game a bit, doesn't it? We are going to change things up a little bit. Our midfield is going to be less attacking, so we're going to have an advanced playmaker on support in Fernandez. Jude Bellingham plays well as a ball-winning midfielder, so I'm going to use him in, uh, that way. Luke Shaw is going to be more of a supportive roll rather than attacking and one bissaka is just completely defensive oh that's absolutely so serious man like 10 minutes into the champions league and declan rice goes flying in our wingers are on support too i mean no we're gonna keep we're gonna keep just sancho on attack actually because i think him linking up with ronaldo is a more i, I guess consistent threat than uh, I guess Leao cutting in off the left and trying to link up with Ronaldo. That's the my theory anyway. We'll see how that goes. Early on though, that is absolutely wild. Hopefully we can keep them at bay and the second leg is worth watching because I mean that that red card basically takes completely out of play the absence of Erling Haaland. It really the advantage may have been in our favor with Haaland not being there. But now down a man, it becomes a lot different, doesn't it? I might, depending on how this is going, I might have to change tactics and, and go a bit more direct and take Ronaldo off, all of that stuff. We'll see though, because I mean, we just, uh, I'm just lost for words. Our possession-based, you know, attacking style really goes goes out the window when we get a player sent off like that. First real highlight of the game, I mean, other than the red card, is going on here. Emre Chan has got the ball on the right-hand side. Can he swing it across? Headed away by Shaw. Not cleared well, though. Or oh, good effort. Good block, though. Still alive here. Fallen out to Guerrero. Gives it to Sukic. Sukic. Doesn't suck it. He absolutely rifles one. Oh, dear. Here it is. It's all <laughs> the plan's completely shot, isn't it? Sukic, Sukic, I don't know how to say it. He's absolutely rifled one from about 25 yards. Bottom corner. De Gea can't do anything. And I think the changes I was talking about with going a bit more direct. I'm just going to have to do at half time. Replace Ronaldo with Adiemi and, and, and try and do it with through balls. Unless we can nab something here, we'll see though. It's Sancho on the ball, giving it to wan -Bissaka. Nice little one-two. Sancho in behind for a second, but the defender does well to keep up with him. Crosses in towards Ronaldo, who 
Look, he's tried to head her from the edge of the box. He's, he's played the hero role. Hasn't gone to plan. But none of this first half has, so I can't really blame Ronaldo for that, can I? Right, it's half time. It's not gone well. We're going to go with a, a nice fire up. We're changing the mentality to balanced. As for instructions, we're not going to play out of defense anymore. We're going to go direct. We're going to stop this overlapping instruction. We're going to tell them to run at defense, but be more disciplined. In transition, I want to. Uh, we've got to stop pressing, don't we? I mean, really. We can't do that. We've got to play a bit lower of a defensive line, I suppose. And I don't really want my forwards that stretched, so we'll. Oh, no. Yeah, we'll go standard and a standard. Oh, no. Yeah. A lower line of engagement, I guess the plan, really, is to <laughs> distribute quickly, to counter quickly, and to pop it out in space ahead of Karimadi Yemi, who we're going to bring on. We're also going to change him from a poacher to an advanced forward because it's what he's best at. Let's just see how we go, I guess. Fingers crossed that works in some respect. I suppose it'll definitely put possession more in Dortmund's favour, which I guess at this stage is actually in ours, which probably won't be the case by the end of the game, but we will see how we go, try and create something on the counter. That's all we can do, really. Here's a corner for Dortmund. Oh, looks like it clipped the bar there, the header from Ikanji, Manuel Ikanji. Is it Manuel? Manuel? I don't know. One of them, whatever. Who knows? Leao not having a great time of it. So I think that'll be our next change. In fact, it will. We'll do it now. We will bring on... Who can we bring on? We'll bring on... I'm actually going to put Pogba on at left wing, but as a like an advanced playmaker, maybe? Apparently, yeah, we'll put him on as an advanced playmaker because hopefully he then cuts inside and can, you know, receive the ball and play through balls for Adiemi. That's the theory anyway. And I think what we'll do is go even more direct. <laughs> just, just straight up long balls. We'll also go a nice higher tempo so that just as soon as we get the ball, we're just thumping it up the field really is... That's the theory of it. Whether it works out or not, I guess we are yet to see. Sancho's looking tired, which isn't great news. Another corner here for Dortmund, which also isn't great news. On the edge of the box, or oh, deflected effort, a second effort off the post. Tamori clears the ball from danger. Adiyemi wins the ball. This is what we need. We need Adiyemi on the ball against the side he's actually signed for in real life, although he's running out for a goal kick. Doesn't matter, does it? Third sub time, and we are going to bring on Frank Kessie in midfield for Jude Bellingham. I mean, we don't really have many other options, do we? What can we do? I mean, I guess that's about it. If we can hold them to 1-0, that would be pretty sensational, I think. Fingers crossed we can last it, or, you know, you nab one ourselves. I don't think my assistant understands the assignment. He's trying to tell me to play possession and shorter passing, but don't want any of it. Just want to lump the ball up the field to our pacey bloke. Try, try and get him in behind. Nothing's really happened this whole second half, has it? If we can nip one at the end here, it'd be an absolute riot. You can see Dortmund have equaled up the possession. Here's De Gea hopefully playing a big long ball forward. Oh, but Dortmund have won it. It's Farias here playing it towards Nigrin. Nigrin? Oh, I don't know how to say that one. We've got to be careful with it. Here's Guerrero playing it back to him. Just wide. Big chance that one for Dortmund. May come back to haunt them, hopefully, in the second leg. Another highlight as the clock winds down. It's the 93rd minute of 94. It's Dortmund on the ball. Header won by Varane. Adiemi gets the ball. Plays it back to Juan Bissaka. Plays it to Sancho. Play the through ball, lads. Play the through ball. Sancho has the ball on the right. Gives it away. See, you look how high a line they're playing. Just pop the ball in behind. Have our mate Kareem, Kareem the Dream, run onto it. Job done. You'd have thought, anyway. Here's De Gea with the ball. Lump it, son. Puts it up towards Sancho. Header one by Guerrero. Play the through ball, Aaron. Aaron, play the through ball. Here's Sancho on the ball. Down the right-hand side. Can he whip one in? He does. Towards Adiyemi! He's done it! He's nipped one back. <laughs> it's brilliant. He's done it. It's the 94th minute. We've gotten... Uh, uh, we've somehow got a draw out of that. 
being a man down for 80 of the 90 minutes and Adiemi has given us an equaliser in the last minute of the game. I'm a tactical genius. I think I'm a tactical genius. That's incredible. What a result. So after a last minute equaliser, not exactly a result we would have deserved, I suppose, if you look at it. <laughs> but we got the last minute equaliser. Some good performances, especially from Kari Mediemi. He got that goal at the end and Jaden Sancho on the right hand side. Luke Shaw also put in a great performance, perhaps, I, I suppose, defensively rather than assisting and scoring goals and things, which is, I guess, what we're used to seeing in this season. <laughs> but we've managed to keep it tight at the back. We've stuck it to a one-all draw. That sets the scene for our next game, which will be the next video. The next video is going to be next week. It'll be the second leg of our tie against Borussia Dortmund. We've got four games between then. You can see them on the screen. It's Blackburn. It's Manchester City in the Carabao Cup final, which is pretty big news, but not the focus of this season. Don't really care. Bournemouth in the FA Cup. Again, don't really care. Probably get through. Don't really care. West Brom in the Premier League, which it'd be nice to win it again. But then the big one. We need to win against Dortmund next time around. Declan Rice won't be there to help us out, but Adiemi, <laughs> Kareem the Dream Adiemi will be. Fingers crossed we can do the business next time around. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. Remember to leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new around here. Comment down below what you thought of the video. How great of a tactician I am after that stunning, stunning display. And until next time, when we hopefully progress in the Champions League, peace.